ladies and gentlemen, uh, welcome. Uh, Secretary Austin will have a few opening remarks and then we'll turn it over to questions. Please note, I will call on reporters. So, Mr. Secretary, over to you, sir. Uh, good evening. Uh, it's great to be back at Kyiv. This is my third visit to Kyiv as Secretary of Defense. My second visit since the uh, war started. Uh, I was here in April of 2022. Since that time, the Ukraine Defense Contact Group, which as you know is a group of about 50 nations that work together to provide uh, much needed security assistance to Ukraine, uh, that group has roared into action and we have continued to work together to provide uh, much needed security assistance in the form of HIMARS, uh, other artillery uh, platforms, uh, tanks, uh, munitions, uh, and so uh, really, really good, uh, good work on the part of our allies and partners. Had a good chance to, uh, to discuss uh, a number of issues with uh, President Zelensky and Minister Umerov. Uh, talked about uh, current operations and also talked about uh, what Minister Umerov looks to do with the Ministry of Defense going forward in terms of his uh, near-term goals and objectives and his uh, uh, mid-term goals and objectives. So very, very constructive conversation. I wanted to reassure uh, the leadership that the United States of America will continue to support Ukraine. And, uh, and so you know, we, uh, uh, we talked about uh, the things that we're going to continue to do to make sure that they have what they need to be successful on the battlefield. Also gave us an opportunity to, uh, to refocus and make sure that uh, we maintain alignment between the operations on the ground and the president's objectives. And so uh, that was uh, a great opportunity. And uh, so overall, it's been a, it's been a great visit. And uh, with that, I'll take a couple of, uh, couple of your questions, sir. Uh, I'm going to derail things. I have an Israel question, so uh, I'm sorry. Uh, have you seen any cause for concern of how the Israelis are using the American-provided weapons, and have you voiced any concerns to your counterparts in Israel? So the question is, have I seen any cause for concern in terms of how the weapons that we're providing the Israelis are being used? We have... Uh, said every step of the way that uh, we, our expectation is that the Israelis conduct uh, their operations in accordance with the law of armed conflict. And we have made sure that uh, we continue to emphasize to the Israelis that, uh, that they must account for uh, civilians in the battle space. And not only that, but they must do everything or should do everything that they can to, uh, to get humanitarian assistance in to, to the people uh, in, in Gaza. And as we've said a number of times, Hamas does not equal the Palestinian people. Hamas is a, is a terrorist organization, and the Palestinian people deserve better. They deserve much more. And again, hopefully at the end of this, uh, you know, this will transition into something that provides good governance for the people of, uh, of Gaza and, uh, and addresses uh, the underlying causes of instability. Ukraine Foreign Office, like Mr. Secretary, uh, German uh, Minister colleague uh, Boris Pistorio said that Taurus won't be a game changer in Ukraine. Some are afraid that even F-16s won't be a game changer. Do you agree with these statements? And what, in your opinion, can be a game changer on the battlefield in Ukraine? Thank you. Well, that, that's a great question. And you've heard me say, you've heard us say a number of times, that there is no silver bullet in a conflict like this. Uh, it, uh, it really depends on uh, providing the right capabilities and also integrating those capabilities in, in meaningful ways so that you can create the right effects on the battlefield. And, and so whether it's uh, F-16s, whether it's uh, high Mars, whether it's something else, it's the way that you go about utilizing those, uh, those capabilities and integrating and synchronizing uh, the capabilities to produce the right effects on the battlefield. Thank you. First of all, there's been a steady drumbeat of aid rolling out for Ukraine. Did you tell your counterparts about any additional U.S. aid that be coming out for Ukraine in the coming days? And then uh, on the fighting, how important is it to prevent Russia from again having the winter months to harden their defenses? And have you received assurances from the people you spoke with today, from these leaders, that they are going to keep the pressure on Russia? 
Well, uh, you heard President Zelensky say uh, a number of times that he intends to continue to uh, keep the pressure on, on, on the Russians. And so we expect that, uh, you know, that, that, that will absolutely happen. And the first part of your question again, Carla? Um, well, the first part was, did you tell them about any additional aid that you, the U.S. would be providing to Ukraine in the coming days? Yeah. So I, I announced today uh, another $100 million uh, drawdown using presidential drawdown authority that it will provide additional artillery munis munitions, uh, additional um, interceptors for uh, air defense, uh, and uh, in a number of uh, anti-tank weapons as well. So, you know, our support continues, but you're right. Uh, other allies and partners are also stepping up to the plate as well. Let's go to ICT. Tell you. Uh, good evening. Mr. Secretary, I will follow up with my colleague's question. Um, from your perspective, is Ukrainian army ready for winter combat, uh, con especially considering the fact of this funding challenges from the United States uh, Congress? I, I think they are uh, prepared for combat uh, um, in, in the winter, and certainly they did a great job last year. Uh, this year we expect for them to be, uh, just based upon what the President has said, President Zelensky has said, for the, them to be even more aggressive. Uh, in this later, uh, this latest drawdown uh, package that I just mentioned, uh, we've included in there uh, some uh, winter gear as well. We provided winter gear last year, so yeah, they have the uh, the means uh, that uh, they'll need to uh, be successful in, in fighting in the winter time. And I think uh, I agree with President Zelensky. The right thing to do is to continue to pr uh, press the fight, take the fight to the enemy. Let's go to KFP. Sure. Thank you. Uh, Secretary Austin. How worried are you personally about the future of U.S. security aid for Ukraine giving opposition in Congress? And how did you seek to reassure the Ukrainians during your visit to U.S. back in the uh, I, you know, I continue to see bipartisan support in both chambers of Congress. And I know that there are some things that we need to continue to work through uh, to, to get the supplemental request uh, approved. Uh, and we'll continue to work with Cong Congress to, to do that. Again, uh, Congress uh, our congressional members have uh, have valid questions that we will answer. And uh, but again, I, I would point out that uh, Ukraine matters. What happens here matters, not just to Ukraine, but to the entire world. This is about the rules-based international order. This is about you know not not, not living in a world where a dictator can uh, wake up one day and decide to to annex uh, uh, the property of his peaceful neighbor. That's not the world that we want to live in. And so this is. This is more than, than just Ukraine. This is about, again, the rules-based international order. Final question, Ms. Ryan, Washington Post. Hi, Secretary Austin. Um, coming away from your talks today, do you have a sense that Ukraine has a more clear path to, to substantial territorial progress and that it has remedied some of the issues that contributed to the problems with the concurrent counteroffensive? And I have a follow-up if I'd like. <laughs> uh, I, I think... Uh, you know, Ukraine, the Ukraine military is a learning organization, uh, and it will continue to learn from, uh, from uh, all of its uh, operations to this point. I think what's important is that you know, the military uh, uh, constructs its operations uh, to uh, focus on the objectives and the goals that the president wants to achieve. And, uh, and again, synchronizing that up and making sure that uh, we remain in the right place or they remain in the right place uh, continues to be uh, something that they'll they'll continue to focus on so yeah I think I think they, they have, they've learned a lot I think they'll continue to learn but you know this is dynamic as they learn and make adjustments uh, the the enemy learns and makes adjustments and then the re related follow-up is I know that you and your team and your counterparts on the military side have been working really hard over the last year and a half to support Ukraine, to train their forces, to get it um, a number of different capabilities, and yet the the oper offensive operations haven't had the outcome that everybody wanted. How does this deadlock on the battlefield get broken, given that you guys have given uh, you know given all the support that you thought you could give? Well, let's let's take stock of what the Ukrainians have actually done. They've taken back half the pro half the uh, the ground that the the Russians originally occupied. I think that's a pretty big deal. I think if you look at what they've accomplished here at the, with the Black Sea Fleet, uh, they have inflicted significant pain on uh, on that fleet and actually caused them uh, to reposition a bit. 
Uh, if you look at the, the damage that they've created to Russian's uh, uh, land forces overall, it's significant. And it will take Russia uh, quite a while to, to recover from that and to, in order to create the kinds of force that it, that it had uh, uh, before this began. So we have to give credit what credit is due. I mean, this is, we said it was going to be a tough fight. It's a, it's a grinding fight, and I think we'll continue to see that in the future. Now, uh, what's important, as you pointed out in your earlier part of the question, uh, is that they learn from, uh, from you know, operations in the past and that they make the right adjustments and that, uh, and that they anticipate that the enemy will also adjust as they are adjusting. So. Ladies and gentlemen, that's all the time we have today. Thank you very much.